Uh, that's the story. And while the media continues to try to trap Trump in a lie, CNN's Jim Acosta botched this attempted takedown of the president. Here are some of the steel slats that the president's been talking about uh, right here. Uh, as you can see, yes, you can see through these slats to the uh, other side of the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, but as we're walking along here, we're not seeing any kind of uh, imminent danger. There are no migrants trying to uh, rush toward this fence uh, here in the McAllen, Texas area. As a matter of fact, there are some other businesses uh, behind me along this highway. There's a gas station, Burger King, and so on. Uh, but no sign of the national emergency that the president has been talking about. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's pretty tranquil down here. <laughs> pretty tranquil because walls work, Jim. I think you just made the president's point for him. <laughs> Greg, uh, that, that was paid for by the Donald Trump 2020 uh, re-election campaign. Wow. I mean, he's at a spot at a wall and says, see, there's no problem here. He may be dumber than we initially thought, which says a lot. Or I'm thinking this could be a really long prank. Like, you know, Andy Kaufman, when Andy Kaufman pretended to be this character all the way till his death. I think that he is playing this role. And, it, 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 and by the way, it's amazing. Look, the media has no credi credibility on this issue because... Just weeks ago, they called this a humanitarian, humanitarian crisis, right? There were people rushing the border. There were caravans. There were people dying. They were suffering. To, uh, and then when Donald Trump agrees and says this is a humanitarian crisis, they turn into this mocking tone. What crisis? It's There's, no cri yeah. There's no crisis yeah. here. Look at this wall. I mean, they are the biggest hypocrites. It is hard not to despise. It's hard to like them, it's easy to despise them. The problem yeah. is that Obama called this a humanitarian crisis. Trump yeah. tweeted that out. And the media is on record so many times as having defended him and so many times as having come in to defend Chuck Schumer and all those Democrats that voted for border security that now they're panicked about how they can flip that now to hate Trump for espousing the very same things that all those Democrats did that the media backed them up on. That's their problem. I don't get that at all. But they you are. are. They absolutely so, are. So the media... You have all of them gathered down there to look at the photo op here. And you have the Border Patrol, and they make an announcement that 90% of the traffic comes in this sector where there's no barrier, okay? Uh, six, only 6% 6 of the traffic comes where there is a barrier. You'd think the media would take an expert opinion like this and maybe write it down in one of their news stories and show, hey, the experts on the ground say walls work. No, they, that's, that's again, that's how you distort numbers. Right. Retweets Brad Pascal, Don Bongino, Charlie oh, Kirk. It's yeah. like he's in the conservative about. echo chamber. Okay. Yeah, okay, so Trump is active on social media. Thank you, Juan. Um, Dana. Yes. So yes, you have these off-the-record things, mm -hmm. and, and then you go down there for this mm -hmm. opportunity to showcase the border. The media is following along. Do you think this is going to make any impact with the press whatsoever? Well, one, the thing about the, um, the off the record being violated, I, that is, it, I don't think it was that egregious necessarily. I, I, I would not like it if it happened to me, but I also would not be surprised if there weren't <laughs> other people who were calling Maggie Haberman, the New York Times reporter, and telling her that exact same thing. Because we know this is what happens. The White House will say, that's not true. And then three months later, you find out, oh, that is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. um, on the fact that the media, how did we find out today that the Democrats have cracks in their coalition? I read that in a Politico piece today because the reporters are out there doing their jobs. It's like it's not all fake news. Like some of the reporting has actually been pretty good. The um, other thing, though, that bothered me is that the other day on The Daily, the New York Times podcast, they they turned this crisis thing into the headline was it's a crisis of his own making. Mm hmm. Right. Because they said he changed the asylum rules and how you apply for asylum so that that's why all these people uh, flooded the border. But that doesn't if you go back to, as Jedediah was saying, the, in, in the Obama administration, mm -hmm. remember when that was a humanitarian crisis, they didn't say that that was Obama's own making. Right. And so it's, it is that is a frustrating thing because there, there's clearly a bias there or an unwillingness to look back and do a fair comparison. Also, the, the Mexican drug cartels and all the drug trafficking and what's going on in Mexico is also not part, that, that's not Trump's fault. He needs to broaden this discussion. People don't like the term wall. He needs to talk about, yes, he needs to talk about barriers, but he also needs to talk about going after these heart cartels. He needs to talk about problems he has with the State Department that wants diplomacy all the time at, at the, you know, and doesn't prioritize going after these cartels. And he needs to talk about the humanitarian crisis that Democrats have been making that case for years and the media backed them up. That needs to be the priority, not just the fence. All right.
Just how far the left is the Democrat Party going? We'll examine some of their most outrageous proposals up next. 